Hey, Jim. Michael. Knock, knock. Who's there? Trick or treat. All right, welcome to You Gotta See This Movie Spooktacular Edition. Um, this is a podcast for two guys who love to talk about movies as well as the deeper themes that make these stories more than just a movie. Uh, I am Michael. And I'm Jim. And if you guys are into this sort of thing, then please consider subscribing and giving us a like. We're here in October. Is this your favorite month? I think it is. Yeah. It's not necessarily my favorite month, but it's like the the gates of my favorite time of the year. Oh, it's like we're gates. here. The yeah, gates yeah, yeah. Of your, oh, okay. Yeah, so All it's right. like, you know, football's back. Uh you got the holidays coming and it's just you know, I love how we we end the year with such fun activities and uh but then you're in the cold it gets heartless cold. world of January. Cold and, and dark. cold and dark. Yeah. But but anyways, yeah, so I love this time of year, and this is probably one of the best times to watch. I mean, you watching movies all the, anywhere, but I don't know, there's something special about Halloween. Oh, yeah, you save all the spooky movies mm-hmm. for Halloween time. For Halloween time. Yeah. Do you get them all in? Because every year, it's like I always miss one or forget one, or it's like Thanksgiving shows up, and I still haven't watched all the spooky ones. There was a time in my life I could, but now it's like my... my it's like, you know, my, my stomach, my eyes are bigger than my stomach. Yeah. Like I have a big stack and yeah, it's just busy. Can't get through them all. Just pick the top 10 yeah. the top five or yeah. Yeah. So that leads me to ask you, Jim, what are your like top five must see Halloween movies you got to watch every year? Okay. Uh, Young Frankenstein. Monster House. Great one. Um, and I know it's not a movie, but Charlie Brown, the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. That's a good one. It's a movie. It's, yeah. it's a classic. Mm-hmm. It's something that I definitely, you know, grew up with. So, um, gosh. So that Somebody Charlie had... Brown movie, that's like our, that's our pumpkin night carving movie. Oh, nice. So like we, we put that on as a family and that's in the background as we're carving our pumpkins. Okay. So, uh, ET. Oh yeah. Which is not like spooky Halloween. It's more, mm-hmm. but it's cool. It's like, it's like, you know, alien, but happy, fun alien. Maybe happy, fun alien. And then, but it's Halloween, <laughs> so that there's like a Halloween scene. So yeah. that's kind of fun. Yeah. Is that five? That's close enough. What yeah. do you got? All right. Well, for me, you know, I, I like scary movies. I like, you know, horror movies. Not all of them, but I do. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Um, but when I think of Halloween movies, it can't be just your any scary horror movie. Like I think of like it's got to have like that Halloween atmosphere to it. So like my musts are the Frankenstein, very the the 1931, right? Boris Koloff, and um, that movie's one. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow. I think it came uh, out in '99. It's it's a it's. <laughs> I don't know. That one didn't really click with. I know, but it's the atmosphere and there was enough about it, but I I can see where people don't like that movie, Yeah, but there was enough about it that, that, that got me. So I do like that movie. I've always liked that story. Ichabod Crane. I remember being in school and like the teachers at this time of the year would read that story. Well, that that's on our list of, of animated. You know, yeah, the Disney yeah, one, which yeah, is yeah. silly, but you but know, it's good. It's good because really the imagery good. of that of the yeah. headless horseman throwing the pumpkin. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're a kid, it's like ah, yeah. All right, uh, another one is Frank and Weenie, um, the animated one, the 2012 one. I want to be clear about that. It's you the need animated to be clear, you one. need to be clear about that because yeah. we we kept talking about oh we got to do that one we got to yeah. do that one and in my mind we could not have been on not we were not on the same page no because i absolutely love the short film live action version that tim burton did with shelly duvall and daniel stern we could not be further apart on that issue and then and then this whole time i'm thinking this is great oh you love it (laughs) i love it let's talk about it and you you're like no yeah no Mm. we'll talk about that with the next podcast but uh but yeah i love frank and weenie and that's a good one like my kids that's our like i think our first, our first uh, Halloween movie watch. 
as a family. Like, oh, really? Right, yeah, we start oh, the season okay. off with Frank and Weenie mm-hmm. uh, animated, and then uh, and then Live another action. one. Yeah. Another one is from my childhood, and it's kind of a rare movie. Not a lot of people have seen it, but and I don't even know how I came across it. I think I just saw it at a video store. And I rented it one day as a kid. Oh, I know which one. Yeah, and I've I've loved it. It's it is utterly stupid. Like I can I can watch that movie now as an adult and be like, wow. There's a lot to this movie that just isn't good, but but it's it's got too much for me that I love. It's called The Monster Squad, and it's a cross between, um, well, it's like the if the Goonies had to face the the Universal monsters, so they're up against Dracula, the Wolfman, the creature, the Mummy, and um, it's just a silly, silly, goofy movie, but it's so fun. So. Yeah, you loaned it to me, and it's. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have any, have any high expectations of it. And it's the silly, story it's is lacking, but like the effects, the practical effects of like Dracula, the Wolfman yeah. creatures look amazing. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, that's a must watch. That has been a must watch for me for years. And the last one is the John Carpenter's Halloween. I've just always been a fan of that. That's another one I probably saw when I was way too young. Should not have been watching it but it's always stuck with me and it's always been such a low budget movie was able just to do amazing things. But that's more of like a horror. Yeah, but I don't know, it's horror. got, it's got that atmosphere. It's got, it's that got, atmosphere. it's got, pull. it's got, yeah. 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 And, uh, so there's like three type, there's a three types of Halloween movies. There's, you got your, you monsters, mm-hmm. you got that supernatural, and then like slasher, slasher right? And yeah. Monsters and monsters include like aliens too, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So it's either monster or a spiritual supernatural creep go ghost story. Mm-hmm. Or horror. Yeah. 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 What's your and favorite? surprisingly, then the John Carpenter's Halloween, uh, it's actually not that gory. It's there's hardly any blood in the movie. So it's more suspense. It's more suspense and more like, yeah imagery he's gonna get yeah you. he's gonna get you the night he comes home anyway so yeah those are my my top five but again this is just such a great great time of the year to watch these types of movies and do you have more halloween movies than yeah. Christmas, christmas movies probably there's probably more been done on that genre than yeah that's a good question i don't know yeah i have a lot of christmas movies too yeah must watch every year i want to do a calendar because I have movies that I definitely watch every year mm-hmm. at a certain time of the year. So I need to do like a master. Yep. Like I always watch Jaws on 4th of July. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got to work on that. I used to watch, I think I said this before, but Raiders was either, I'd watch it during Easter because of the, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Easter. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of a weird one, but, or I'd watch it uh, like on my birthday in May, but. Yeah, the, your birthday is like your your favorite. Like yeah, your top favorite. That's yeah. your like, daddy picks the movie, kids. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna watch Raiders of the Lost Star <laughs> again. Again. Luckily, we're not there yet. My kids like that movie, but okay. we'll get there. All right. Well, Jim, what is the movie that we got to see this Halloween season? The nineteen fifty six classic, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Ooh. Ooh. A small town doctor learns that the population of his community is being replaced by emotionless alien duplicates. Yeah. Yeah. So movie in a nutshell is the doctor's name, Miles. Doctor, I can't remember his last name, but I know his name's Miles. Yeah. Miles Doctor. Miles Doctor, Doctor played by Kevin McCarthy. And he, uh, he comes home to find out that his whole little small town, this town of Santa Mira um, is just they're all everyone's acting different and she's all not, she's not my all mommy. these people yeah he's she's not my mommy that's, that's my not mommy. my uncle yeah all these things and he's just kind of hears them out until slowly he starts to kind of know there's something here and then he finds the pods realizes that the pods are producing replicates but then the person that they're replacing goes away which I don't think in this movie they actually say they, dies they just says you're not. Yeah, they didn't. They never touched on how the the human body disappears. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. uh, yeah. So it's just him, him, and 
his girlfriend and two friends trying to survive in this mad, 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 mad world. But being taken over. Yeah. By aliens. So first off, you know, let's, let's talk about, um, just this story, body snatchers. This was the very first time it was ever made into a, a movie. So this, this, this is by far like one of my favorite movie tropes, right? Like just the whole idea of like body snatching and you've got a sequel that comes out in the seventies, which is actually really good. And we're going to talk about this one too. It's different, but it's good. I'm sorry. That's not a sequel. It's a remake. Yeah. Um, and then you got another remake in the nineties, which was not that great. I mean, that was the the military base one. Oh, did you see that one? I did. Okay. I haven't seen that one. I watched the trailer and went, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then there was one in 2007 that wasn't good at all called invasion. Yeah. See, I watched it. Well, I went to, I was going to watch the the 78 one. Yeah. Sutherland one. And so I searched for it on Amazon and then the invasion popped up. I'm like, Oh, I might as well start there because it's newer just to see yeah. what, yeah. And, uh, no, it wasn't good. No, I no. saw the movie one time because I was so jazzed for it because, again, I love yeah. these movies. Yeah. Um, But then there are two movies that are kind of, you know, invasion-esque. Um, you know, well, one is Invasion of the Soap Monster, which oh, is a yeah. classic. Yeah. Spooky Spooky, um, which That's, I feel like they did that right. They did it right, yeah. 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 Better than 2007 Invasion. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun little film. It is. You know, the people that put that together, yeah. they, they missed yeah. they had a Maybe blast. we should link that. Link it. We'll link it. People see that. What's one. it called? Called Kooky Spooky. Kooky Spooky. Yeah. Spooky Halloween. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. It's so, a, it's a it's a classic. It's it just is. gonna be like uh, Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. You it know? should be. It yeah, should be. it should yeah. be. But it's classic. It's classic. The other one was well. There's two more. There was another one called uh, Invaders from Mars. Oh, I just saw that again. It's so good. Like, I mean, did you it's, like that one? I saw that as a kid, and again, like it's this whole like idea is terrifying. Like it's, it, it, it's it very, it didn't, it's, it's very terrifying. It didn't hold up at all for me. Oh, um, that's got Lorraine Newman in it, right? Oh, Saturday Night Live. She's the mom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then another one is called The Faculty, which I really like. I saw that it was when I was in high school. Wait, isn't that a vampire movie? No, it's, oh. um, it's, it's a it's body snatchers movie and it's about a bunch of kids in high school it kind of starts within the high school. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. You got to, I'll let you borrow that. Okay. That's, it's a, it's a, it's a, I think they did the, the trope well for okay. in its time for what it was. Um, it, it's pretty good. Right. But yeah, I, I think this is like, this is terrifying. Like just this thought of, you know, being taken over, not necessarily me being taken over, but like everyone I know and love, my friends all of a sudden are not the same, you know, like they got taken over. Like, I think for yeah. me, I look like back at invaders from Mars it was always that visual of the dad going over the hill, right? Yeah, but he, and then yeah. he comes back, and you can tell like that's not my dad. Like there's something wrong. Wait, that's the one where they they in the back of the neck, and they did they put a creature in you? Yeah, it takes over your mind. Kind yeah, of thing? yeah. And they keep saying like, yeah, come with us over the hill, come with us over the wall. And it's always just like the visual of like walking over the hill, and when you come yeah. back, they're not the same. And when the dad wants yeah. to take the mom. He's like, no, don't go, don't go. But what's different with body snatchers is that they're not, they're not just like commanding, taking over your body and controlling it. It's like they're, yeah, they're basically just. That's true. Wouldn't it have been easier for them to just jump in the body and take over? Why do they, <laughs> why do they have to make a whole new, right? A whole new, because it's creepy. Because it's creepy. Yeah. So, what are your um, what's your background with this movie? When did you see it? Oh gosh, it was on TV. Mm-hmm. You know, was it one of those old black and white scary movie on TV? You know, yeah. I mean, that's definitely where I saw it. Yeah, I I actually saw the seventies version first, um, and I can remember because it freaked me out. I remember it was a Saturday. Um, I remember I had to clean my room. I could not go anywhere until my room was clean. Um, I had an old black and white television in my room. And I remember watching, getting done watching wrestling. And then all of a sudden it was like the movie, Saturday movie of the week came on. And I just put it on as I'm cleaning my room. And I remember just like kind of just watching it. And you no, know, there was no cleaning though. But I remember just being freaked out about it. But yeah. I liked it, you know. And um, especially because like in that one, that's when they screamed that god awful sound. Yeah. That, yeah. 
And, well, uh, and that was more graphic as far as yeah. like the pods and everything. So I then I remember wanting to watch it again because as a kid, I remember always wanting, I could watch a movie like back to back, the same movie. Yeah. But we go to my um, video store and I got the wrong one. And I got the old black and white one. Oh, really? But then I ended up liking that too. And, you know, I think I didn't watch it right away. I think I was bummed, but, um, but I ended up watching it and I was like, oh, this is just as good, you know, and I've been a fan of it ever since. So which one do you like better? Oh man, I don't, I knew you were going to ask me that question because I was going to ask you that question. I don't know. I think they're both good in their own way. And yeah, they hand, they handle the. I guess the way they kind of go through the story, it's different. It's got a different vibe to it. Mm-hmm. I think the the fifty six version is is better. I think I like the pacing on it better. Mm-hmm. It's tough. They're both really good. Yeah. I mean, as far as the visuals go, you know, they do a lot more um, in the seventy eight version. Yeah. And one thing that was really like in the fifty six version is like, well, how does this pod can it? How does it absorb your thoughts and everything because there's really no contact but in the 78 version when the pod was next to next to donald sutherland his right. character the, the, the little, vines the little vines and little hairs yeah. are like you know like like they were connecting to him to, to suck his <laughs> consciousness suck, or his whatever. consciousness yeah and then and then they uh the 78 one they also resolved like what happens to the body yes and they did that and i yeah. totally forgot like like when she when she's being snatched and his girlfriend's being snatched yeah. and he's like holding she her flakes away and her body just like oh, like she was yeah. away like a like a prune just like that was like pretty gross yeah yeah well, yeah I don't know both good so I mean we're gonna keep talking but I think these are both movies that I think everyone should see but okay what's your favorite scene in the fifty six version I don't know I, it's just the story from from the very beginning grabs me and if i was to say like what's my favorite scene there's something about the 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 um the square scene you know when they're hiding and it's just them two left it's you know miles and becky yeah and they're up in the building and they're looking down and like oh what look everything looks normal till it wasn't and then you know all of a sudden then people started all coming together it's like, cause it's the new people were coming into town, like on the bus. Yeah. So everyone was acting normal. And as soon as they escorted the new people away, the police took them away. Then all, they all stopped. And then they all kind of came together and, you know, were able to do their thing and pass out pods. And like, then you realize, okay, this is how they're going to do it. They're saying, where do all you guys have family members? So now you're like, see that, that what makes this movie and this story so brilliant is that it, everything we need as a people is getting played against you, right? You need sleep. And part of it is like the pods get you when you sleep and you can't go the rest of your life without getting sleep. So eventually that's going to get you. The other thing is that now your most trusted friends and your family are against you because that's what they were doing. They were passing out the pods or saying, okay, who has family in uh, century city? Okay, now you go and now go to this oh, truck, pick yeah. up your pods. And like, so now that like, everything, you know, but I kept it's, thinking, I was like, well, why don't you just go to sleep? Like someplace where they can't put a pod next to you. I mean, what's the range? What, what's the connection? I, how, how far away from a pod can you be where it won't? I think once, cause the whole movie was, they were trying to get out of the town. Right. Yeah. Um, once they realized something was up, but they couldn't, you know, get out of town. All the roads were blocked. You know, they knew the police were, were, already pod people yeah so i think they were i mean they probably once they got into the office probably could have went to sleep but but if they have enough people in town with with the pods at some point they'll catch you and put a pod next to you and you don't know where the pod is yeah so they could be putting pods anywhere right yeah so like you know they didn't know the pods were gonna be in the greenhouse becky didn't know the pod was gonna be in the basement oh yeah and they put the pods in the they put the pods in, in the back of the car in the back of the car so they'd yeah. be like oh they'd be driving along and oh let's just pull over and rest yeah. we're safe we're safe we're and safe then, nope pods are in the car so okay so if the pods are in the car in the trunk of the car right mm-hmm. okay so let's say they fall asleep yeah now the, the, now the the bodies are in the trunk they can't get out so then what happens wasp an alien's problem <laughs> i don't know kick the back of the would they yeah mm-hmm. i don't know 
They might be all right. It's a good question. Um, I don't know. I so, yeah, so that's, I, I'd have to say, like, that's my favorite scene. What about yours? I like, uh, it takes off for me is when, is when he, when Miles goes to his friend's house and, and he invites him Ooh, in and says, hey, that is, I that did, is a good I scene. You know, it's like, I need you to have an open mind about mm -hmm. this. He says, don't, don't be a doctor right don't now. Don't be a doctor. Just come mm -hmm. in and check this out. And then the body's on the, on a pool table. Yeah. I think it's on a pool table. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, this is weird because it's not formed all the way. Oh. Yeah, it, it, they said it, it's a human, but it's just not like a done human. Yeah. Yeah. No fingerprints. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's good. And that, that's really when... Yeah. I agree when the movie... How tall really... is that guy? Oh, he's about 5'10". Yeah. How much do you think he weighs? Oh, 140 pounds. Just like you. Jack weighs his 110. <laughs> Jack... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet, Teddy. Do you know? Did you know who Teddy was? Jack's wife. Do you know a movie or a TV show she was on, famous for? No. Morticia. Morticia Adams. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. All right. Yeah. Going back to the beginning of the movie, though, I think as we meet the character Miles, you, you know, you meet him. He's crazy. He's nuts. And then as he's telling the story, he's, you know, goes back to the doctor getting off the train. And there's something, I like the contrast between the crazy and the arrogant, you know, cause he's, he was kind of came across as like an arrogant doctor and, you know, he's young, you know, got the world by his hand and just kind of world in his hand and can do whatever he wants and have all the answers. But slowly, you know, he gets put in a situation where he has to lose all that. He doesn't have all the answers. He does not. No. no. But, uh, yeah, so I like that. I like that. And again, going back to the whole small town, like everyone knows each other. And that's kind of where it makes it, I guess, a little bit more frightening because, or I don't know, just the idea that like they know each other, they know who their personalities but so even so, because they knew that they're still, these aliens were still able to kind of put the wool over their eyes for a little bit. They played it up. They played it more straight in the 56 version. It mm -hmm. was really harder to tell, to tell until the, until the alien tips is, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Because that was one thing. So the, the whole idea is that these, these creatures, these pod people, they don't show emotion. They're all intellect, no emotion. So, um, but, and they really do that well in the seventies version. But in this, there were times where like they still had to show emotion. So like in, in the beginning when, you know, little Jimmy, Jimmy Grimaldi was running away, like that's not my mom. That's not my mom. And, uh, and the grandma doesn't know what to do with them, you know? Uh, but then there's a scene later with the mom and the son come back and you, and he's just like, Oh, I love you, mom. You know, I love you. And they're kind of happy sitting on his bench. Yeah. So you could tell like, yeah, okay, he little... got taken, but yet they're showing emotion, right? Yeah. That doesn't yeah. work. He should have been. Yeah. Like, they should have been just like. Played it a little more straight. Oh, but... me and my mom are fine now. Yeah. yeah. But. More robot like. More robot like. Yeah. But whatever. Anyways. We say aliens, but it's like, it was more like a, wasn't it more like a germ? Like a, like a no. virus, like a. Both of them, both of the movies but, were but does, okay, so aliens. Like, okay, so like the aliens, but does each alien, the alien that enters the body doesn't really have its own consciousness. It just, it just assumes it like, you know what I mean? It's like, how does the alien know it's an alien? You know what I mean? There's a hive mind. Oh, it's a hive mind. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they, they I say, they you, say that the seeds fell from the sky. I know, but it makes you think like, okay, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like identity theft, like the ultimate yeah. identity theft where so, the, where the, where the, this being present thing takes over the body, yeah. assumes the consciousness of the body and then what kicks out the soul. Yeah. Kicks, right. Yeah. Because it's basically, it's like, oh, I'm now this person. I am now. Mm -hmm. Uncle Ira. I but got, I have all I, Ira's memories. I got all Ira's memories. Mm -hmm. He's going to keep being Uncle Ira. He's going to go mow the lawn. Smoke a pipe. Smoke a pipe. He knows everybody. Mm -hmm. But does he have the consciousness of his alien self? 
He does he, because he does. Well, yeah, I guess it is a collective, he, right? You know what? It could be. It could be a thing of these aliens are a unique organism. Whatever, like the organism is, that, like the, the seed, right? That yeah. grew the pod. And then what comes out of the pod mixed with the humans is its own new species. So it's almost as if like this is a brand new species of, of alien. So like the mixture between the space seed, <laughs> which give, you know, grows the pod. Right. Because the pod, I guess, is just a vehicle, creates this new being. I'm trying to wrap my head around the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah creepy story because it's not like because it's not like yeah it's not like the alien takes over it's just like the alien becomes you know what i mean yeah but they really don't you yeah that's another reason why this is so good because they don't go into those details as far as like yeah it came from the sky you know it grew in the the farmer's fields and here we are yeah you know so it's really it's like it's not really about how that happens it's about like how do you deal with with this how do you deal with losing everything and and yeah and that's like classic 50s sci-fi is where they don't really try Mm -hmm. to figure out like how they got here where they came from how we're going to fix it it's just like are we going to deal with this at this moment in time and i do i do like the process that they take yeah trying to figure all this out you know like they as a doctor he really did try to justify things and he tried to like look you know Maybe you're crazy. Maybe, you know, um, people just change or whatever. And then at one point, the psychiatrist, I think it was a psychiatrist, convinced him, like, no, you just saw a dead man, you know? Yeah, but was he an alien faking him out? The cop was. I think the, the cop, cop was. The cop I think was the psychiatrist too. was, too. I think he was in on it, too. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I think he was, yeah, in the beginning of it. Because I think that's when they, yeah, I, I don't know, but... Um, but then, yeah, but they kind of believed it for a while because then like the next morning they're like, why don't you just stay the night at my house? But they all wake up the next morning. Everything's fine. You know, they're cooking breakfast and, uh, you know, that was, that was another funny thing is like this whole movie, like miles is trying to still hook up with his ex girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> like he keeps taking all these like opportunities, uh, you know, to get with her, but like, you know, something happens or, or whatever. And these aliens are messing it up. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, then his, his friend's like, Hey, can we stay one more night at your house? And he goes, all right, I guess I had other plans, but whatever. Yeah. Because at that point, like, I think they're like, Oh yeah, we jumped the gun. We made too many conclusions where you're right. You know, that, that's such a crazy idea to think that there's something crazy going on. So but they do. They don't just jump to conclusions. They they're pretty logical. Yeah, they're trying to figure. They're really out, yeah. trying to like disprove anything supernatural, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's, I think that's like what we'd all do, you know. Aliens aren't very sneaky, though. I mean, they just kind of put the pods wherever. I mean, at some point you're gonna see it. I guess they're just assuming that if they have do it enough, that they'll eventually it's gonna yeah, happen. Yeah. Yeah, we can't escape it. Yeah. So that moment where he sticks the uh, pitchfork into the yeah so that, freaked, that freaked me out as a kid. It still yeah. gives me the willies, and I don't know why. Because when he when he stabs the alien replicated body with the pitchfork, it kind of looks ru- like rubber. Yeah. But but then it's like you know it's like not a real human. So that and then it's like even more creepy because it's like. Oh, he's like a fake man, but he's like, yeah. he's like rubber. And he's going yeah. <laughs> to, and that always creeped me out. One really creepy scene. And I don't think I've ever really noticed it until I watched it recently uh, for the podcast. But um, I guess it just never dawned on me. Like how, what a creepy line it is, is it's when uh, he, he's going back to his assistant's house. Cause he thinks like, you know, he can trust her and he walks up to the house there, but all the kind of like the pod people are having like a town meeting in the house. Oh yeah. And, uh, and the guy comes like, what do you want me to do with this pod? And the girl goes, put it next to the baby. Ugh. And, and, and then she goes, and then she says, and soon there will be no more tears. And I was like, Oh man, that's creepy. That's creepy. Yeah. Eventually he, it's again, I think one of the reasons why this movie, it's so terrifying is because you start losing all your, you know, your friends and like his friend Jack ends up 
becoming a pod person. They try to convince them like, no, this is just the better way to go. Um, but they try so hard to get away. And I guess what was really interesting about the whole end sequence when they're running. So I was reading a thing about the, from the director, Don Siegel, he was saying that, uh, they, they filmed all his running scenes like consecutive consecutively. So it wasn't like, you know, one day we're going to film these running scenes, then you're in these running scenes. So he was exhausted from running all day. That's brutal. Yeah. Wow. And, and I guess like he, he really like, like, uh, Kevin McCarthy wanted that too, because he wanted that exhausted look. And so when they got to the end they're running from all the people, finding out the whole town is just, you know, chasing them. And I know like in, um, the 78, you get the, the scream. Yeah. But in this one, I think it's kind of substituted with the siren, the town siren yeah. that goes off and that's very off putting. And, you know, just know that everyone's looking for you and you just got nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. But, but yeah, he was really exhausted and he demanded to do the scene on the bridge, um, where all the cars going by and he's like, they're coming for you. You know, and he's trying to, you know, what the uh, the actor or the, the actor? Oh, the actor. Okay. He demanded it, and the director's yeah. like, "We got some people to do this." Uh -huh. and he's like, "No," and he was like terrified. Like, he told all the drivers, "Like, you need to be careful," because he they they knew he was so exhausted and so tired that he's like, "Man, he's gonna get caught underneath a wheel." Yeah, he's gonna yeah, he's get gonna, up in front of the wrong. He's car. gonna do something dumb, and so. Um, but it was just another thing he wanted to add to the performance, and they filmed that scene at dawn. When traffic was a light, it's in, um, I think it's like, like Lakeview place or something in Mulholland, but, um, it's a pretty cool bridge. I've been on that bridge before. Um, but yeah, they filmed it at dawn to even get more tired, but yeah. What, what other movies has he been in? I don't recognize this actor that much. He, I, I, he was in the Twilight Zone? The Twilight Zone movie. Mm -hmm. He was in that. Yeah. But I'm thinking, well, there's he was in this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's two. Which is funny because he does make a cameo in the first one or in the, in the seventies yeah. one. And he's still running and yeah. like telling people they're coming for you. Yeah. So it's almost as if like, it could be a sequel, but this whole time the guy has still been going around telling people like it's eventually it's spread. From the small town, so to it the took big him city. from 1956 to, to make it across country. It took him uh, yeah 20, 20 some years uh, to get to the San Francisco where they showed up there. Yeah, yeah. So just kind of looking at his 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 thing, um, Kevin McCarthy. I I just always known him from TV stuff. The character um, actor, just a good character actor. Yeah. There's nothing really, you know. He's yeah, I mean, there's nothing really that he's been on. Um, I'm sure he's been in a bunch of old, like, Yeah, he's in Matinee. I remember him from the movie Matinee. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just a bunch of, just done a lot of things. But I think this was his number one movie that he did when he gets memorized or recognized for. Is that going to be on his tombstone? <laughs> they're, here, they're here coming to get you yeah but but yeah so the end you know I think so we get the two differences between the two movies is that uh, in this version because the whole time he's telling the story to the government right yeah and they're not buying and they're it. not buying anything this is dumb and so the guy comes in and be like oh there was an accident on the freeway a whole truck full of these weird pod things and they go where, do you, where was the truck coming from Santa Mira yeah. like like it was very like on point and then they finally believe him but it ends with our audience is like alright everything's gonna be okay yeah so my question to you, do you think it ends there do you think they were able to stop the threat or do you think it was just inevitable that it was eventually gonna spread like you how can you stop oh, it oh man yeah how long do you think it took him to because only one pod needs to get out of the city right and then there's more pods and more pods and what, you know, it could have been like a full on like pod people battle, mm -hmm. right? Because that almost would be like a separate, another movie because then now you're dealing with like, how do you, how can you tell who's on what side? Right? Yeah. Cause like, what, yeah. Because they're obviously, they got like into the military, mm -hmm. right? Let's just say, for example, like everyone knows that these pods exist. This happened in the small town of Santa Mira. 
Yeah. You hear it on the news, but then you start wondering like, well, did it get out? How can you tell if it got out? How can you tell they're all gone? You know, what if all of a sudden, you know, half the country is pod people and the other half isn't. I don't know. I guess you got to do like, like pod watch and watch the trucks coming in and yeah. check your neighbors. Check your and, neighbors. and Yeah. Yeah. That, that'd be a pretty interesting uh, yeah. movie to kind of see this because um, that's one thing I, I don't think they've done with this story is to see it from a global perspective. Although it probably would be more sort of technical and strategic and not as interesting. You know I, mean? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's something there. Yeah. More yeah. like a, like a pan, pod It'd pandemic. be like a pandemic thing. Maybe like a pod yeah. pandemic, yeah. Maybe too soon. That's too soon. Too soon. Yeah. All right. Well, do you have any movie magic? Movie magic? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but I did have something. This the the seventy eight one did inspire. Well, they both inspired, uh, you know, uh, teenage me to to do a a home horror movie. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, me and my buddy, we um, actually I built a little house. Uh-huh. It was going to be like a miniature for the exterior shot. So I did like a house exterior. Um, at night and so we kind of zoomed in on the window of the house and it wasn't really wasn't that good and then we wanted to do the uh the pod you know with the alien coming out of it so i got a a flower pot you know like a terracotta flower pot and i put a hole in the bottom of it and then i've got some lettuce and put that in and then i got an avocado hollowed it out put that in as the pod and sort of pre-cut the top and then uh got a bunch of eggs like just raw eggs and a gi joe Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, you know, like the big, uh, the, the 12 inch ones, yeah. right? So my old GI Joes, and then we can I cut the camera rolling on it. And I just, you know, I take the GI Joe and start shoving them up through the pot. And yeah. just covered in just raw egg and slime uh, and stuff. And we got an air hose and blowing a little air in there. It was disgusting. That's awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. That's cool. I, I wish I still had the tape. Yeah. 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 And that's as far as we got. That was it. And yeah. then we moved on to other things. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, one thing about these movies to um, what I like about them is that, well, specifically this one is that we, we live so close to where these movies were made. And this is like one of those places where like Santa, um, you know, the, the whole town square thing I talked about. That oh yeah. That's, it's that's, like, that's I've been the other, there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the other connection that I have yeah. is that I, we went, we, uh, we lived in Arcadia at the time when we went to church in Sierra Madre where the yeah, town square is. The yeah. town square is, yeah. yeah. Just down the street, yeah. So it's kind of cool to be able to go to these places to see where these cool movies are made. And it's they use the uh, the Bronson Canyon and the Bronson Cave. Yeah. Have you been there? No. I've always wanted to I've go. I've always wanted to go. I think they got a chain link fence Yeah, you can't get in there, but that's the Batman Cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the Batman Cave. And Six Million Dollar Man Cave and yeah. uh, every other... TV show they movie needed. where they needed a cave and shot at the Bronson, Bronson yeah. cave. Yeah. Griffith yeah. Park, Griffith Park area. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you can spend just a good, you can spend a day just going all over that park. Yeah. Like different locations and stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about kind of the deeper themes in this movie, um, kind of from a Christian perspective. And there's kind of a lot here and I, I didn't even know where to begin because I don't, some, sometimes this movie does a good job. Uh, I mean, I feel like this movie really does a good job kind of doing that, but I don't, there's so many things I can like pick and choose from about this. And really like, there's just some lines in the movie that I thought were really, really good. And one of the things they, they talk about, you know, when they're trying to convince, like when his friends got, became pod people and they're sitting down with them and again, it was almost as if they were just having a conversation. You know what I mean? They're sitting in the, in the, his hospital or his doctor's office. It wasn't like they were had a, like guns on them or anything. They were just like, "This is going to happen." Like, you're, do you want? Remember, he says, yeah. "Do you want want us to bring the pods in? Do you want to watch them grow?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no. But uh, you know, he, he says, "Look, like this is just a better way of life for you. Like, think about it: love, ambition, faith." It's the world is far better without them. And he argues the point, but then the pod people says, you know, because that was a whole nother subplot in the movie. 
is that both Miles and Becky are just newly divorced, right? They're newly divorced people and they, they really thought that their marriage were going to last, not divorced from each other, yeah. but divorced from their husband and wife. And he just so happened to be in town together at the same time. And he says like, to your point, like you guys have been in love before. How did that work out? You know, trying to say like, look, we're right. Like you, you went through your divorce. It didn't work out. And so it just kind of begs the question. Like it, it, what I got out of it is just the, the idea of free will, right. And how important it is. And, and even though, yeah, like having kids now, if I can, if I can, um, if I can, you know, spare them pain, you know, I would like to do that. But pain is just a part of life, it's a part of life, right? Yeah. It's a part of you know who we are and and just our condition. And and I don't know. There's been times where I feel like I'm just rambling, but there's been times where I just like God. It'd be so much easier if you would just direct me, guide me, or just co- control me. Yeah, you know. And I'm sure there's something you know with God that probably says, yeah, it would be easier, but you wouldn't be you. It would be me. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yes, you know, we have to look at it. We are God's creation and there's something special in all of us and who we are. We're all uniquely made and, and God probably, yeah, it would be easier to control you, but it would be me. It wouldn't be the unique you that I've created you to be. Yeah. So free will is, it's, it's a, it's a rough go because like I can see the point of view from the aliens as well. Like, but do, is it, is it a, that they don't have free will or is it, is it, they just don't, I don't know. It's weird. It's like, I don't think they have free will. Well, they, I kind of related it to free will. Yeah. I mean, they might, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess to their point, it's like they can't, they can't, they can't be emo, you know, emotional or, yeah, it almost like yeah, it's almost like a it's almost like a hive mind, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. They they can't they can't everything is controlled by something else. Like thing that you don't have that that you can't express yourselves in a way that you want to because somebody's is there is something in you keeping you from being that way. Yeah, yeah. Huh. There's there's two just the idea of the hive mind or like you know we're all doing it for the collective of the greater good. So, you know, I, I, I am sure you read this or heard this, but a lot of people think like the whole body snatchers is like another tale of like the red communist scare. Right. Everyone's scared about at that time when everyone was scared about being a communist right? and how like even your neighbors could be communist or, or whatever. Um, which the, you know, Don Siegel says, no, I just wanted to make a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's just that whole idea of like you, you lose your individuality, yeah. individuality. Well, what did they say? They said a life with no, with no, uh, with no faith, right? Yeah. So it's so like, like, I mean, yeah. at that point there's like, there's nothing beyond this life either. Like there's nothing, yeah. there's no hope. Yeah. There's nothing. There's that, nothing. I think they actually say hope too. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, and it was those faith. things, love, ambition, faith, hope, yeah. um, are all better without them. And, uh, and I think that's the lesson here that we need to learn is that, you know, you could take that you could take all those things out of us, right? All of that, the emotion out of us. And we can say like, well, we want emotion. Why? Because we, you know, because we can love, we can hope we, there's so much we can do with emotion, but at the same time, we can do a lot of evil. We can rage. We can be angry. There's, you know, there's another side to emotion that's horrible. And I think that's where these pod people come into play. Like, like the, all that's gone. But I think the idea is that like, you need to live and to work that out, right? You can't just eliminate one or eliminate them both for the sake of a better, you know, world, like, Mm -hmm. like learn to regulate emotion, learn to, to not rage, to, to, to be better on that side of love and hope and all those things. Um, like, yeah, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, I guess. 
And there was another line in the movie too that um, I thought was pretty cool. It, it was, you know, he was talking about when Becky finally becomes a pod person. Mm-hmm. And he says, it was just a quick moment of sleep that was a death to the soul. And again, like he brought it back to yeah. like the idea of like, this is what we're losing. We're losing our right. soul right. to these people. Yeah. And yeah, we, as a human race, we can do a lot of bad things, but we can't, you know, the very thing that makes us doing the very bad things are the things that we can do so much good for too. Yeah. So, mm. I don't know. It's a weird one. It's like, it's yeah. just one of those movies where it's, you can just take it at face value and, uh, they're coming in and taking everybody's, but then you start thinking about consciousness and mm-hmm. soul and faith and all those things. Yeah. Yeah. I really, yeah, I really think that, that God just really wants us to be unique, our unique selves. Yeah. And yeah, we have that capability to sin. Yeah. We have that capability to do evil things, but I think that's why he's like, look, well, that's why I want you, you know, in me. That's why I want you in fellowship with other believers or, you know, or whatever. But those type of things, that's why I want you with me because I know this life is hard, but I'm not going to give up your soul and who you are for the sake of just controlling you. Right. So, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. (laughs) All right, Jim, it is time for the Halloween movie battle extravaganza. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. But we're doing things different. We're doing things different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how are we doing it? Okay. So, you know, normally we come up with questions on our own. Which is a little tough because it's like, now you got to figure out if that's a hard question or not a hard question. So I figured it might be better if we have an outside person go through the movie and come up with the questions. Mm, okay. It kind of levels the playing field. It does a level the playing field, yeah. And I think it makes the competition a bit better. So okay. we got our sound engineer, Joel. Hello. Hello, Joel. Hello, Joel. <laughs> you guys actually answered some of my questions as you were going through it. Fantastic. And yeah, what it was if we most what? of the easy ones, so all that's left are the hard ones. Great. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, do you want to hear the ones that you got just through talking? I don't yes. know. How many do you have? I had 11, but it looks okay. like you answered three of them throughout okay. the podcast. Okay. What were they? Okay. So the first one was... Miles finds a pod person of Becky growing in the house. Where does he find it? The basement. Basement. Um, the second one was, what was the full name of the boy that almost got hit by the car? Jimmy Guaraldi. Yes. And then um, the other one was, the imitation of Jack Belichick is found lying where, and you said a pool table. Pool table. Yeah. yeah. So Guaraldi. Those were the, yeah. I wonder if he's a, a, a nephew of Vince. Vince no, Guaraldi. No, Vince Guaraldi. <laughs> or is that a different Guaraldi? Grimaldi. Grimaldi. Oh, Grimaldi. Yeah, Grimaldi. Oh, not Grimaldi. No, that's the jazz. Guy. All right. Yeah, those were easy ones. Crap. There's one easy one left. Okay. Let's start with All that right, one. so how are we doing this? Are we just uh, going to say, like, that's me? Like, if I say my name first, I can answer it first? I think we're going to switch off. Okay. And All right. we'll do the for chance to steal. Okay. Oh, okay, that's All good. Right. But right. for who goes first, I don't know how we'll decide that. Maybe rock, paper, scissors. I mean, I am kind of the season one champion. Oh, are you the champion? Okay. So I'll let you decide. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm also a gentleman. Okay. I'll take the first one. All right. All right. All let's right. do this. Okay. First question. This is easy. Uh, Miles discovers that two pods have been placed into the trunk of his car at the gas station. Upon discovery, he lights the pods on fire with what item? This is a big scene. Yeah, I think it was just, I, just a, sti- a stick ma- box of matches, like a matchbook. Okay, is that your final answer? No, no, no. He gets a road flare. <sighs> yes, that road is flare. correct. He uses yeah. a road flare. I had, I, I had to visualize a scene yeah. in my head. Yeah, he uses a road flare. And those things lit. Yeah. Like, like somebody soaked him with some <laughs> with some barbecue yeah. lighter fluid before he lit him. It kind of would have been nice if they were like squeaking like... <laughs> yeah. burning. Oh, so, or they were popping like yeah. pine cones in a fire. All right, mm-hmm. uh, that was a good question. That's right. The, the, the road flare. I'm scared now. All you right, know, I don't what's think my I've question? I've ever lit a road flare. Have you ever lit a road yeah. flare? Like you crack the top open and light it? Yeah. I don't think I've ever have. Kind of fun. It looks like fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's a blast. All right. <laughs> okay. 
Are you ready for your question? Yeah. <laughs> Later, we're going to go find a pod and light it with a road flare. Yeah. Okay, so the, this is a medium one. Oh, my God. Wait, was that the easy one you gave your dad? Yeah. I'm just going down the list. Okay. Let's be nice. All right. This is, the, this is, this, this is a medium. To okay. have your son doing the questions. <laughs> Becky cooks something up for Miles' breakfast. What is it? It's eggs. Okay. Yeah. What kind of egg? Come on, bro. Egg. It's eggs. What eggs come in? It, what, is it omelet? Is it scramble? Is it hard boiled egg? Did you are, are one of those the right answer? Yes. It's, it's omelet. No, it's uh <laughs> scrambled. It's eggs. Is that, man. Your, is that your final it's answer? Eggs. The reason I made this question because I had noticed it and I was like, this is kind of odd. I know they had the whole conversation about eggs. Okay, what's that's your, when, what kind like, of because there were also there were also hard boiled eggs sitting on the table too, waiting for him to eat. So that's when we'll have that what's his, so what's like, his oh, breakfast? The problem with the doctor is that I was never home for those dinners. Okay, so what? Scrambled eggs. <sighs> All right, it's hard. It's no, it's hard. It's a hard boiled egg. She puts. Why? Well, I said that. Yeah, but but she was also cooking something too. It was eggs, but she's not scrambled. Just hard boiled. That's it. You see her put them in the boiling water. She takes one out and she puts it on the table for him. Oh. <sighs> Man, but I kind of said the right answer. You kind of did. I'm gonna give that to you because okay. you knew that I there said there's a hard boiled eggs on the table. And that's what's funny is that it's got its own little like yeah, special yeah, like stand. a candlestick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that's her egg breakfast that she just hard boils on. Man, he's gonna marry this gal. <laughs> right? yeah, it's gonna, well, gonna be boring. Kinda, he kind of dodged a bullet. He did dodge <laughs> he did a bullet. Yeah. It would have been hard boiled <laughs> eggs for breakfast for the rest yeah. of his life. Wow. All right. One to one. Okay. Okay. Here's a medium. That's for me, right? Yeah. Okay. Uncle Ira is seen smoking from a pipe. What kind of pipe is it? This is easy. It's a corn cob pipe. Yeah. Yep. It's a corn yeah, cob. Corn pipe. cob. Okay. I made a corn cob pipe once. Hmm. I never smoked it. I just made it out of a corn cob. That's awesome. Just because I just don't know something to do. I had a corn cob. I saved it. Dried it out. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hmm. You ready? Yeah. You ever smoke a pipe? Yeah. Oh, cool. I haven't. <laughs> I should have saved my pipe for the you. The 90s were a crazy time, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Michael. How many pod people does Miles find and his company um, find growing in the greenhouse? So wait, I phrased that weird. There's four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. four pods. One for all four of them. That was easy. Yeah. Oh, all right. I mean, the mediums are... Kind of All right, easy. that's a good one. Okay, now two, we're, two. we're getting into the hard ones here. Oh yeah, you know the ones in the greenhouse in that movie where they were? It's like they had like suds on them. Yeah, which reminds me of this Halloween special where the monster was like a suds monster. It's like a sud monster, right? Yeah, that's yeah, funny. Sud that's funny how they kind of use the same thing. Yeah, it's kind of like a nod to that movie. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Yeah, yeah. Kooky spooky, right? Kooky spooky. Well, we're gonna link that. We'll link that. We'll link. Kooky spooky Kooky. to this episode. It's yeah, great, it's great, great. Fan, great family fun yeah. Halloween film. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question. Okay. Um, all right. So this is a tough one. It's a time one. I feel like you always get the questions about what time it is. <laughs> but uh, what time of day is it when Miles and Becky notice that it's too early for all of the towns? Oh, I know this about? one. I actually know this one. I can steal it, right? If he doesn't get it, right? He doesn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's too early for all the townspeople yeah, to be yeah, out. Yeah. It's a Saturday morning. They look at the window. They see everyone's out and about. But then he goes, oh, well, it's this time. Yeah. It's too early for everyone to be out. Oh, man. I have a number in my head, but it might be wrong. I could be wrong, too, but I'm close. I'll, I'll, I'll be close. I know that. Okay. I'm just going to go with the very first number that popped into my head. but And I'm thinking, well, it's probably not that early, but 11 a.m. That is incorrect. Uh, I would like to steal. Okay, go for the steal. Was it 7.45? It was 7.45. 7.45. Oh, that is yeah. early for the town to be hopping. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the wow. The whole town is out. And On a like, Saturday morning, weird. no less. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they'd be out in about at 11 for sure. Yep. Yeah. Woo! Okay. So 3-2 now. Good steal. All right, you All right, ready? Now it's my turn for the question. Yes. Here we go. All right, so this is a tough one. Where was best Becky Driscoll staying prior to coming home? She came from somewhere. Where was okay, it? Okay, okay, okay. Europe. No, that is wrong. I'm I'm wrong. It's incorrect. 
the steel? Well, I was going to say from Italy, but that's Europe. That's Europe. That's Europe. No, that's not. Not Italy? No. Is it Paris? But Paris is still Europe. She was in a specific town bef- right before she oh. came. Oh. It's where he was. They were in the same town. They together. were in the, they were in the same yeah. town. It's at the beginning of the movie where they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, some northern California. It was like was it, it wasn't San Francisco, was it? No. no. Sacramento? Nope. I don't know. I don't know. It was Reno. Reno, Reno, you're right. That's because that's where the Reno. conference was. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Hmm. All right. Damn. No one gets that one. But she did come from Europe. She's married. Yeah. No, she came from it Europe. Was right before. Right. I get it. Technicality. <laughs> Still three two. All right. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Wait, whose turn? It says my your turn. turn. Okay. What is the name of the bar Miles and Becky go to? <laughs> oh, it's an Iron Giant question. <laughs> oh man! And I even looked at the sign and and was thinking, we're not doing those questions, so I'm not, <laughs> so not going to write it down. Yeah, that's one of them. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was thin for questions, so I had to use what yeah. I got. I I will steal. Okay, and I don't know. So. No. All right, you guys want to know what it was? Yeah, what? yeah. It was the Sky Terrace. Sky Terrace. You're right. Yep. You're right. Now I can see it. Yeah. Do do. All right. This is the last question. All right. This is the last one I got. Um. If I get it wrong, he steals. We tie. Yes. All right. Here we go. Okay. So, what does the psychiatrist Danny Kaufman assume the issue is with the town initially? What is his diagnosis for what's happening in the town? He, uh, he says it was, like, it was like a neurosis. Okay. I, yeah, well, I would accept one of two answers. Is so neurosis like, your final answer? I mean, I know he says neurosis, but... Um, some sort of like hysteria. I, I, I don't know. Okay, I'll give it to you. The, the, it was strange neurosis or mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. Yeah. I was going to say mass neurosis, but it's <laughs> kind of the same thing. So. Okay. All right. Is that it? That was fun. Yeah, it's the trivia battle. Well, I like it this way. This is a fun way to do it. Can I ask you my question that I, w- that I had? Yeah. Not off, off the, the yeah. competition. Okay, so Miles goes over uh, to Uncle Ira's house mm-hmm. and, and Uncle Ira's wife wants them to stay for dinner right and she says oh you gotta stay I'm cooking up a meal and later I'm gonna make some what was it special dessert she was gonna make him and it was weird it was a weird yeah, it was I a know, weird thing I don't know what you're talking about about making that the question but yeah I didn't write it down I can't think of it but oh. I know it Oh, I'm going to make some spoon bread. Spoon bread, yes. Spoon. Yeah. What the heck is spoon bread? Look, you know what's yeah. funny is because I looked up spoon bread, but I didn't make it a question. Oh, yeah, that, that, was, that was my only question I had written down was spoon yeah. bread, and I still didn't look it up. Well, all right. Well, we both agree that this is a movie that you got to see, and uh, yeah, everyone should see it. Even though if, you get a lot of people that are just like, I'm not into black and white movies, but man, this is... This is really good. It's a great story. It holds up. Yeah, and it's it almost like up. a like a Twilight Zone almost. It's yeah, really not that long. It's either. not. It's like yeah. less than an hour and a half. So yeah, yeah. And it's a good clean movie. All right. So where do you rank it, dude? I totally forgot to rank this movie. <laughs> well, what did you rank it? Okay, so even though I love this movie and I, it holds up, it's really good. There's just some, you know, I don't know if it's just 1950. You know, Don, the director, Don Siegel, he goes on to be a really good director. Like he, he's, they consider him as one of the kind of like the new Hollywood kind of getting out of this, you know, old way of making movies. And then things were a bit more grittier and grounded. Um, so to me, I'm like looking at this where he, this is the beginning of that, but there was still some old stuff. Like, like for example, there's a scene where, you know, I think it's when um, Jack, they call Miles to see that body for the first time. Mm-hmm. And Teddy comes out. She's freaked out. 
but yet when she sees Becky, like they go hand in hand, they're smiling. Yeah. It's just like, you know, what happened to you being freaked out? You yeah. know, and it was almost as if like now they're acting as if like, oh yeah, we're getting together for couples dinner or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. So there's little things like that. If it wasn't for stuff like that, this thing would be over a nine. But for me, I got to bring it down to an 8.8. 8. Yeah. I was, I think it's going to come in around an eight for me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, obviously a 10 is one of those movies you're like, oh, I got to watch it, mm-hmm. you know, immediately afterward. And it's not a perfect movie. No. But man, it's a good story. So. It's a good story. I do watch this every year. Yeah. I'll put it in at about 8.5. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. we're pretty close. 8.5. Yeah. 8. No, it's definitely, you definitely got to see it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, make sure everyone, if you're at home uh, and you have not seen this movie, put this on your list this this Halloween season. Put the 70s one on your list this Halloween. It's a bit more darker and a bit more hardcore, but uh, um, you want the family-friendly version, get this one. Yeah, it's a good one for the kids. Yeah. It's not, it's not crazy creepy. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still pretty pretty creepy. Well, it's freaky. The yeah. idea of it is creepy. Yeah, it's not, but it's yeah. not a horror slasher. No. No, it's, 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 it's but, good. Yeah. So watch it, enjoy it, and uh, yeah. All right, that will do it for this special edition of You Gotta See This Movie, Halloween edition. This and, spooky uh, edition. Spooky edition. That's right. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And if you if you like this kind of thing, please uh, subscribe and like us. That helps us out. And we'll see you in the next one, the next Halloween movie. Don't you ever throw candy at me again.